Hi everybody, welcome back to the Gallagher Shots YouTube and podcast channel and welcome back to the first match reaction of the Premier League season. It's me, Scott, here with Chris. Um, Chris, let's just jump straight into it. How was yesterday in St. James's Park? It was amazing, mate. I don't know why anybody was worried because we are the greatest team that's ever existed. <laughs> The atmosphere it was, it was great being back. Do, do you know what it is? I wasn't nervous yesterday, you know. I haven't been nervous for the start of the season, but it, it was a weird feeling because, like we mentioned a few times last year, we came out with no way in regards to how well we're done. This season, there's a bit of expectation on the lads and on on the club as a whole from everybody from the outside as well, not just internally. Something, I just hope we get off to a good start. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that good of a start. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. We were sensational. <laughs> we, we really were. And I, I, I think a lot comes down to, to the atmosphere and St. James's Park as well. Um, yeah. Obviously, we had the new cellar display, which is it's the Flames. I'm sure we'll talk about that, yeah. which it was all right. Um, I, I obviously turned my nose up when I heard about it, first of all. But when it was happening in the moment, it was fine. It was fine. It is what it is. We're not going to get rid of that. This is what cellar do. They're a sports entertainment sort of thing. So this is what they're going to do. But what did help was the safe standing, mate. We are sit, obviously, yeah. all that safe standing now. And I've sat in that seat, I think, for four years, four or five seasons, I would say now, since I moved across from the East Stand. And even people around me that don't normally get involved were, were singing and chanting away. So uh, that little pocket was mint. It was great. Loudest it's ever been. So do you, do you think, obviously, this is a trial, isn't it, or it's a... It's a... To test, do you think they'll move that to more of the Gallagher end? Or yeah, they'll, they'll just keep they'll just, they'll keep on stretching it around to, to the Gallagher. I would have thought, yeah, they have you've to, still got to, a to seat, right? If you want to sit down, yeah, yeah. there's still seats, yeah. still your normal seat. You just got a big barrier where I sit, I'm on the front, so I've always had a barrier anyway, just like your normal sort of metal barrier mm -hmm. that you would get. Um, but behind you, there's like a railing, there's like a big silver railing, and that goes obviously in front of the seats normally, uh, so people can lean on, so it stops that pile forward. But yeah, it, it's it worked really well. Not so much for the way fans mind. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit high to be standing up. I think up there. Up there. I don't know if I like it. Just that metal bar. Um, we'll we'll touch on the starting eleven. Um, obviously a lot of speculation beforehand on who's going to start and how Eddie Howe would line up. It was pretty much horses for courses, apart from mm. the middle of the field. Um, I think yeah. the biggest surprise for everyone was Tonali getting his start. Um, I thought I think a lot of people thought maybe he'd be drip fed into the squad. Um, yeah, just like Eddie Howe's done with numerous players, I, I think mm -hmm. it's it's helped the fact that Longstaff isn't one hundred percent fit. Um, yeah. So the the fact that he he picked up, I think it was a muscle injury over in, in the states. Um, obviously he played in the the last game in the Salah Cup, I think it was. Um, yeah. but he's he's not one hundred percent, and hence why why Tenali starts and. Yeah, it was a shock. Um, like you said, like anyhow, doesn't normally do that. Uh, but we've got to remember he's he's had preseason with the lads as well. We've got him in yeah. early doors, so he's up to speed from from that point of view. The only that shock really was was Isaac for me. I thought Wilson would have started, but I, I think, like you said, it, it's it's a flip of a coin really with those two now. And you know what it is Eddie knows best. <laughs> he mm -hmm. knows best, and, and Isaac had a great game. He did. And I think a lot of people were home and on between Anthony Gordon and Harvey Barnes as well, which one of those would start. I think had Harvey Barnes had joined when Tonali maybe had joined in the squad yeah. and had a bit more of a preseason, maybe we would have seen him start. But I mean, jumping straight into the game, Anthony Gordon ran the show those first 20, 30 minutes. Um, what a performance from him. Um, obviously, we'll get straight into that first goal because it was so quick. Yeah. Into the game, um, I think it was six minutes. Six minutes, uh, yeah. On the clock, um, it was. Uh, I think it was. Well, it's Tenali who starts the move offs completely. Yeah, he wins the ball in the final third. And goes Bruno to Joel takes a shot, and it's a good save. Or was it Joel? Yeah, it's on itself. Bruno takes a shot. Bruno takes a shot. I think it comes back to Joel. I want to say it just ends up back in the pocket where it came from. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Then obviously then it gets played out to Gordon. In. Yeah. Now that it's... cross by Gordon, by the way, when I've watched it back, he doesn't even look. He just knows where to put the ball. He's just head down, kicks the ball. And, yeah, I mean, Tonali debut, puts it away. It's, Could you ask for anything Denali's more? Run, mate. It's Tonali's run. Yeah. Like, I think the highlight on the, on Sky Sports afterwards, that he just sits, like, mm -hmm. like stationary, just doesn't move. Then the last minute, that's when he, he makes a break. So I think there's only one Newcastle player. I think it's Isaac in the box, and it goes yeah. over his head. 
Then out of nowhere, Tonali comes running and, and I can't remember which Villa defender it is, but he's running in trying to block it. But Tonali's got eight as a space uh, there and he times his run Luka perfectly. Dina. Is that who Luka it is? Dina's, uh, he's, he's on his heels, as they say. Um, yeah. Not expecting it, yeah. It's, um, it's that delayed run into the box. And t- do you know what it is? For him to get in that position is the sort of midfielder that we've needed for for a while, yeah. those late runs into the box. And I, I think Willick's normally quite good at doing that, but obviously he's injured. Um, but mm-hmm. back to going, throughout the game, it's just pass and move constantly. Yeah. And I think it was him and Miggy like, teamed up quite a, a bit as well. And it's just pass and move every single time. And he made yesterday look effortless. Yeah. Everything they touched turned to gold, really. Yeah, I think, you know, he's obviously playing with a ton of confidence back off, you know, end of last season, then the Euros getting player of the tournament and then coming into this. I think had Eddie Howe have dropped him, that maybe maybe sort of stunted that confidence a little bit. Yeah. So he's probably riding on those coattails as much as he can. Mm-hmm. Um, not saying that he's a bad player and that's all he's doing. I think the confidence is bringing out how good of a player he is. Um, about five minutes later, Tenal- well, not even that, Tenaldi nearly got a second. Gordon again playing him through. Um, he's one on one with Martinez. Takes a shot. Fortunately, it's saved. But that got St James is absolutely jumping yeah. from what I saw on the TV. If it wasn't already, but that second attempt, we—I th- I think a lot of people were thinking, "Is this going to be another Spurs?" Yeah, it could have been me. I think it's the next yeah. phase of play. To be fair, I think it's straight after the, he, he gets his first goal. He, he's one on one with the keeper again. It's a great ball once again. I was very shocked at, at how much of a mess Villa's defence turned into at times. Mm. Um, and we saw it in pre-season where they were playing quite high up the field. They weren't necessarily playing as high as that yesterday, but they're just looking an absolute shambles. I'm not sure if it's just we completely bullied them and made them look like amateurs at times um, because they're a decent team. And this is a team that we've been probably comparing ourselves to this season, thinking they've had a good transfer window, obviously what they did last year since Uni Emery came in. Yeah. We're probably putting ourselves in the same bracket as them. For us to, to do what we did to them yesterday, it's crazy, absolutely crazy. But like you said, when, when Tonali's one on one, it's a great save. To be fair, it's a decent save by Martinez. He, he pulled a couple of those off. Yeah, he's a it's, good keeper. Yeah, and and I'm thinking he's cra- absolutely crackers as well. Like, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's a great save. He, he is great on one on one positions. Um, he just makes himself look big. He done it a couple times, like I said. But like you said. It was very similar to the Spurs game as an atmosphere because I know obviously the, the the shot was saved, but we're thinking inside the ground. We look the real yeah, deal we'll today. Look. We're we're up for this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and I mean, the only thing that can really dampen that is a goal against you, and and that came pretty quickly. And obviously, it was oh, it no had way. to be Diaby. It had to be Diaby who got that goal after all the links over the yeah. past season and a half that we've had. He looked dangerous, um, mate. Like he looked dangerous throughout the game. He Diaby, he kept on dropping him to the right wing, then then dropping as a striker as well, coming up playing in a striker position. He looked dangerous. Um, there's a few times where his pace, honestly, just ran right over that side, but never really came into to much after the goal. It's it's an unlucky goal to concede. I think there's a bit of a deflection from the cross that comes in. It's headed back on, and, and Diaby is just similar to, to Tonali, but without the, the burst into the box, he's just in yeah. the right place at the right time. Yeah. It's a great finish. Nick Pope can't do anything about it. He's just he's firmly planted on, on the deck. Then he just he can't do anything. It's the um, the flick from I think it's Watkins who gets the flick Knocks on. It on after it, yeah. after it deflects off trip. Yeah, so Joe Linton's in the middle, and he doesn't know where that ball's going because it's deflected and then it's flicked. He's kind of in two minds what to do and he tries to attack that ball with Watkins, which unfortunately leaves DRB open. Yeah. And it's, it's a first time hit. And I mean, you it's don't hit finish. it much sweeter than that. Like it's a great yeah, finish. It's a great finish. Um, that, and then the Tyrone Mings injury seemed to just kill the atmosphere, killed any momentum in the game. It seemed to just kill that first half completely. Well, what is that injury? Because in, in is it his knee that he's done? It looks like I haven't looked at what he's done. They said on the TV that he's went straight to the RVI. Um, so he went straight to the hospital. So whatever it is, it's pretty bad. But it looks like it's his knee. Um, watching the replay back, it's just a 50 50 kind of shoulder tackle with Isak. Mings thinks he's stronger than Isak, and, and he kind of just they kind of just bounce off each other. And it's the, the landing of Mings. Yeah. He lands funny on his knee, and then he jolts. 
and it, it looks like he's done whatever ligaments or whatever in his knee, but you know, I'm, I'm not a doctor, so I can't really say. Yeah, you're right, <laughs> um, though. That, that, but, that uh, killed Villa, it, it killed Villa, yeah, uh, really. Um, it, though there was nothing wrong with the challenge, he's actually unbelievably strong, and he'd done that a couple of times where he just absolutely, you know, he oh, he just plows into players, <laughs> absolutely smashes. Yeah. Like, for, for Mings is a big lad, and he just just knocked him in the deck. You know, obviously, the Villa, Villa players are kicking off, um, but there's nothing in it, absolutely nothing in that challenge. It's just unlucky that he's picked up the injury. Yeah, I mean, it, it was the keeper. I think the keeper ran out and was trying having a word at the linesman, how were the, the ref mm. saying, look what, look what he's done to him. It's like, you can it. VR would have looked at it. Uh, and I do yeah. want to touch on VR a little bit later on because I think it was done very well. Yes, yeah. it didn't take long at all. We'll talk about it a bit later on with, uh, obviously, a <laughs> Is that of the, the goals later on. The decisions went in our favour. <laughs> well, one of them really didn't. And this was kind of towards the end of the first half. I didn't see this because my TV messed up. I saw the ball come out. I saw Miggy with the ball. I saw the keeper come towards him, all in stills. And then the WhatsApp group just exploded going, red card, red card, what's going on? Oh, right, card? okay, yeah. So I haven't seen the goalkeeper incident. Um all right, but you've, you've not seen it. But I've seen it back since, but I hadn't right, seen right. it in real time. So people, people are asking me, like, "What do you think?" I'm just like, "I don't know. I haven't." <clears throat> I literally, got a still, still, and then Miggy's on the floor, and then yeah, I just that's all I got. It just stuck out a bit. So, um, watching it back, is it a red card for you? Nah, it, in the ground, I hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. Well, well, I'm there in the moment. <laughs> yeah, it's it's red. Get them off. Yeah. Um, but do, do you know what is it? If you look back and look at that with quite being level-headed it's it's not a red card um villa i think we've got three defenders running back towards goal it's it's never a red card martinez he's like i said earlier he's crackers he does that a lot he comes off his line he loves heading the ball absolutely loves yep. doing it i think he, he did it four times, times <laughs> um, but it's it is what it is it's a yellow card at the end of the day yes in the moment emotions are high and everybody's screaming for a red nah it's a yellow referee got the right decision there it, it's one of those ones where, you know, a lot of pundits talk about like an amber card where it's a bit too strong for a yellow, but it's not quite a red. Like, that's the sort of thing that... that it's, would be, but... If it was a player doing that, it's a yellow card. If it's yeah, an outfield player, it's a yellow card. So why does it change for a keeper? And those, I've heard a few people last night when we're out saying, oh, but Nick Pope, has he, Nick Pope handballed it? As he, he yeah, literally it handballed it outside of yeah. his box. And I went, and that was like stopping Salah from scoring because he was one-on-one -on -one Salah. Mm -hmm. He, that's the difference. Do you do you think that's fresh in people's minds because of the Amazon documentary? Because the show Probably. that towards the end of the Amazon documentary, um, yeah. is it, it it's because all quite quickly that Liverpool game. We've had a few decisions like that. I remember the Pickford one where I think he clatters yeah. uh, Rondon. I think it was. If I remember right. Um, and nothing. And he, he, he should Ryan have been sent as well with um. Yeah, Ryan Fraser against, against City. Yeah, yeah. There's been a few moments like that where we don't get decisions going our favor. So I think we always feel a bit sorry for ourselves in the, these sort of moments. But <laughs> it's it's a yellow card all day. I don't even think it's this amber card. It's, it's it's a yellow card all day. Yeah, yeah. Well, second half comes in. Obviously, booze from the crowd because of the the referee. Uh, because of that, and again, it's heat at the moment. But um, you miss with second, second half comes on. I did miss a second. I've skipped over it, yeah. Um, <laughs> did you, you stream kick, for that one as well? No, no, it didn't. Do you know what it is? It's because we talked about VAR. I jumped straight over it. Um, yeah. Um, second goal it was a Trippier free kick. Uh, I think it was Bruno who got fouled needlessly as well um, mm. to, to get that. And you're expecting Trippier to do what Trippier does and whip that ball into the box. He doesn't. Yeah. He squares it to Tenali. Now he's just stood in okay. miles. He's got loads of space. I can't. Loads of space. What a ball, though. What a ball in the box. It's perfect. It's, it's it drops at the right time. And then it's is it Botman who gets it? He sticks it. Well, he, he's jumping. Botman and gets kicks a leg it back across, it. yeah. Botman kicks it back and then, across. And it's, 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 it's at that point, it's, it's just another different sort of goal that we're scoring. Um, yeah. I think last year, towards the end of the season, like the set pieces dropped off a bit. But I think there was an interview with, with Trips earlier this week. It might be when he was doing his fantasy Premier League stuff. And he's talking about free kicks. Who's going to score a free kick? And he said, it's either going to be myself or Tonali. Yeah. And, and like you said, that ball that Tonali puts in, it's it's pinpoint that made. It really is. And I think going in to half time, 2 1 up, then obviously on the back of that decision with the referee, I said, my brother, I had a, a half time. I went, because of that decision and because the fan base is. is 
so emotional now because everybody thinks it's a red card as we'll mm-hmm. come out and absolutely batter the second half. I mean, yeah. you can tell they're all over the shop now. We'll absolutely hammer them and we weren't, weren't wrong. We could have scored seven. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, touching on the third goal, um, really, it, it's, a, it's a it's a run from Gordon again. He plays in Isak. I think it's Gordon. might be in Joel Linton, but he plays in Isak. Um, nothing on. Just pressurises the defender. Defender turns without the ball. But then the finish from Isak. Panics. He panics the defender. Absolutely yeah. panics because Isak is just all over him. He's there, and he? he just, <laughs> the size of that kid's legs. <laughs> With his peripheral vision that the defender must have just seen legs from either side coming at him. <laughs> um, it's, it's very, very good play by Isak. He just doesn't give up on that. And like I said, defender just gets himself in knots. Then he literally gifts that ball to Isak. He just Gives him it. He's got an ego. Yep. Like, actually, any stride as well. Just gives him the ball. Then, like you said, the finish. Martinez is coming out at him as well. As soon as he picks that ball up, Martinez is out. And he it's, he just dinks it into that corner. He couldn't hit it anywhere else. And he does it to perfection. And it just shows you that that high press works still for yeah. us now. It's Miggy was doing it all game. Gordon was doing it. In fact, uh, Tenali was finding himself up really high up the field at some points and it's just shows you what Eddie Howe has done it's basically give everything and don't give up on any sort of opportunity because like you said out of nowhere we'll get a goal yeah um, we've seen it against West Ham obviously it's a different scenario but with the, the goal that Isak scored against West Ham last season where he dinks it over a few players and, get, and he knows where the goal is I mean it's a totally different finish but I mean he's absolutely um, just on point was, with it. We said last year, mate. We said last year, sixty million is a lot of money, but it's yeah. an absolute steal. Do, do you know, every single time I see that kid play football, I'm like, how have we managed to sign him for sixty million quid? <laughs> because yeah. he, yes, he's an unheard of kind of player, but he's he's not this household name which, which people refer to when you talk about elite players. But he is going to be up there. From what we're seeing from that kid, he is going to be a top top player. And we're seeing yeah. it now. We're, we're seeing him now. He's still a young lad. It's it's funny because I think he was through just after that, and, and I made a note here about the timing of his runs. Mm. He can start behind a defender, balls played, and he's got the pace he's and rapid. also the timing to get past any defender pretty much in the league. You know, it, it's it's good to see. Um, it's nice that we can do that. You know, I think Callum Wilson before his injury used to be able to do that very, very well. And yeah. I think now he's he's still got the pace, but he's maybe lost a yard or two where he has to be running before the ball's played to, to get that. But Isak, so, so you can like hit you said, a ball the next, from nothing. Well, the next move, yeah, it's 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 Isak again. It's our phase of yeah. play. It's Isak who's one on one with the keeper, and once again, it's a decent save by by Um I thought I thought that was his hat trick there, yeah. and I think. After he does that, because it's towards a Gallagher at this point, he uses a lot of his energy there for that burst of yep. speed. And he takes a little while after he misses that opportunity. He's probably absolutely good at that. He's missed it. Okay, he's hard as well. But he takes a little while to, to get back mm. to, to where the rest of the players. Then just after that, he has a conversation with Eddie Howe. Then I don't think it's long afterwards that Wilson comes on and makes the change. Because I think he was absolutely knackered. Him and Miggy just didn't stop all game. Yeah, it's it's a double change, isn't it? They, they bring off um, Gordon as well for Barnes, mm. um, and then Wilson comes on. And it's a nice little Wilson double sub to have, isn't it? Wilson and Barnes. Do you know what it is? <laughs> it's not not just Wilson and Barnes. We'll bring on. Um, we we'll make like later on in the game. We we'll bring on Longstaff. Bring on um, Armstrong. Comes on. Murphy comes on, and it's just yeah, it is Murphy, isn't it? They, on the TV, they said it was Armstrong coming on. No, they yeah, said Joe Linton going off. The officials got it all wrong. I. And then Joe Linton's like having a drink in the goal. In the goal yeah. And thinks he's going to get booked here because he hasn't been booked yet. And we were expecting a Joe Linton book and, and And then let's change it. And it's like, oh, okay, that's why he hasn't moved. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, Wilson and Barnes, again, linking up very, very well. Um, Almost two identical you know, chances. Yeah, pretty much. And do you know what is that the first chance we'll talk about it now? Um, obviously, Barnes goes through. I think this is bef- this is after the fourth goal, if I remember rightly. But Bonds is through, and you're thinking you need to hit this, and he squares yeah, it to Wilson, it. and he just doesn't hit it hard enough to get to Wilson in time. The defender catches up. I think it's Pau Torres 
Um, he's That's got a bit a of sign pace. of a new player joining the team. Yeah. That he's trying to, really. to square that to give it to Wilson. When... You know what you see on the on the TV? You might not see this on the ground, but Wilson shouts over and going, "Harvey, smash it!" Like he's yeah. telling them to hit the ball next time. You know, we do that. but we'll we'll take a step back because we've skipped another goal. Four uh, one. I can't believe I'm seeing four one against Aston Villa, but you know <laughs> it gets better. Uh, spoiler alert. Um, it's Barnes playing in Wilson um, for mm-hmm. the the fourth goal. It's it's almost an immediate effect for the pair of them. You know, they come on and, and they do this, and it's it's the run that we see all the time. But before Barnes gets the ball, I do want to touch on the the one two link of play between Tenali and Joe Linton. It's mm. like they've been playing together for years. The 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 understanding they have together, I think it's Tonali plays it to um Joe Linton, Joe Linton passes it back, and then Tonali plays a through ball through. It might be the other way around again. I, I can't fully remember, but it gets to Barnes on the byline and he just looks up. Wilson's making a run at the box. He p- puts the ball where he needs to put it, and he does it right this time. And he smashes it in. Um he it's, wasn't confident, was he, Wilson? He, he thought he was offside. He thought he was no offside. We all thought he was offside. Yeah. Um, VR looked at it, and this is where I want to touch on VR because VR looked at it and they looked at it very quickly. And it was like, mm. boom, done, decision. And it seemed to happen more and more throughout that game where it's almost like they're now not looking for the mistake. They're looking to mm. see if it's clear and obvious. And once they find if it's clear and obvious, they're just making the decision. They're not. Yeah, when a VR a couple like, of times, I know I know every decision is really looking at VR, but I think it was Isaac's First, it went to VR as well because the referee got the ball straight away and he's hovering award yeah. towards the edge of our box and um, waiting for the decision to come through. And it, it was pretty quick. It, it just, do you know what it is, mate? It does steal that moment away from you. I, yeah, I, like, I, I, I get VR, right? And and yes, the likes of offside decisions, they're crucial in, in games like these, of course, that are. Mm-hmm. But it still kills it, mate. It's, I, can't, yeah. I can't get away with it in the ground because... You have that initial burst of celebration, but then when you see the likes of Wilson looking over at the linesman, then obviously the referee straight away with his 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 hand to his ear, it just your mood just thinks, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll go again. Do you think it would be better if there was more screens in the ground and everybody could see what's going on on the screen? Because obviously at St James's, you're only really seeing that screen if you're in. I don't. It's, it's not even corner, maybe. It's not even that, mate. It's it's just the fact that you can't have that initial burst of, of emotion celebration because yeah. you're always really cautious and normally obviously the way it previously used to be if the linesman flag wasn't up then you knew straight away um, now yeah. it's I don't know like I, I know why it's there but I, just, I still can't get away with it mm-hmm. Um. so just just after that we'll talk about the Barnes one on one with the keeper but he then makes amends for that Yeah. he's through again I think it's Murphy with a, it's it's great ball like by Joe Litton's, Joe Litton's touch for the Salah Cup where he gets past, uh, or was it in the, um, was it in America where he scores his goal? I think it was against uh, Fiorentina where he takes just a touch. Just it, just tours it around the pair. There's Paul Torres who's running in like a bull in the china shop. He comes running in, Murphy yeah. just knocks it past him like he's not there and sends Nice little shot. subtle touch, isn't it? He just knocks it around him, I'm away. And it's and a great he, ball yeah. through to Barnes. Great ball. Yeah. And like you said, Barnes learns from, from that, that, Mm-hmm. earlier era I'm not even going to say it was an error really with the thing with, with Wilson because you can see what he's trying to do um, yep. it, it's just a decent save but the second one like you said Wilson's told him to smash it next time and he does just <laughs> he that. does exactly that he does do. just that and do you know what it is like it's that's three players that have got goals on the debut in that yep. game you've got obviously Tonali, Diaby then Barnes and, and Barnes was brought in to score goals from that side of the field and he does it on his debut. It's do you know what it is? If if people weren't excited for the season already, that game has made you excited. It really has because a lot of people were worried going into the Villa game. Like I said earlier, they're probably on par with us. I, I, honestly, I was gobsmacked with that performance yesterday. Absolutely gobsmacked. Yeah, they had a couple of chances. Nick Pope pulled off a couple of good saves, but mm. they never seemed like they were going to trouble us after that second goal. Um, yeah. Well, really, it was it was really like I said after Mings went down. It mm. kind of just they were kind of just like, right, what do we do here? I think it's Minx that captain. I think he kind of runs the show a little bit on that pitch. So maybe it's uh, yeah. maybe it's they need that leadership and they just didn't have it. I don't know. Um, if you're a Villa fan watching, let us know what you think happened. I think McGinn uh, was McGinn below. captain last season. Um, I'm sure I think it drops oh, and changes because because I think um, 
Mings's role was very similar to what Lascelles was with ourselves. Um, I, I think he got. His, I'm sure he got the captaincy took off him. I'm sure Mings did because do you not put a statement on on social media about it was, on the captaincy took off him? Wasn't was it? Um, oh, who was it? Must be when Emery Gerard wasn't it? Was Gerard? Sorry, when Gerard came Gerard in, took it off. I'm sure, him, he yeah. took it off him because he wasn't playing, and I think he said mm. that he wanted his captain to be on the field. Yeah, I'm sure it's McGinn or maybe Lang. God knows. Yeah. I'm sure maybe he got a bad, Villa fans. Now he's on the field. This, to be fair, so somebody will come in. Yeah. Someone let me know. Tell me where we've gone wrong. Um, but yeah, it finishes 5-1. It puts us top of the table. Um, <laughs> you, you know it's only the first week, but we're top of the league. I'm taking it. I don't care. Um, the chant went round I mean, St. James's Park as well. It did. <laughs> when we it scored, did. the fifth the chant um, was going round. <laughs> well, it, it did only to stop the Sandro Tonali song, which seemed to just be on loop for the entire match. Right. Uh, so I've, I got, can... I've got an <laughs> issue. I've got an issue with this chant. Is it's it, a it great ready? chant. I'm ready. No, it's it's a great chant apart from the last bit. Yeah, the hate Sunland. Nah, that that needs a change. Drinks spaghetti. Not yet. It, it drinks already soon. eats spaghetti. Hates fucking sun. Nah, I don't like that bit. But that chant was loud, very similar to when we used to, to do it with the, the the chant of Rafa Benitez as well. Yeah, it it was loud, and like you said, it mm-hmm. did seem like it was on loop, <laughs> and it was all coming. Like I said at the very start, it was all coming from the standing section. It, it yep. was loud yesterday. Obviously, the result helped it. Um, mm-hmm. But man, what a start! Five kickoff probably helped as well. The, the two yeah. points for two, two, two points for five. I probably helped in the ground that Matty was saying. Um, what yeah, a start! It just built a really what, what, it's because obviously, if we look at the opening fixtures that we've got, obviously Villa, then City, then Liverpool. That's a tough start to yep. any Premier League season, no matter who you are, and. I think yesterday was crucial that we got a result. And I'm not, I'm not saying it's a must win before people stay, but we needed to get some points on the board and we needed a decent performance. Confidence going into the Man City game. And yes, I know it's Man City and we're at the Etihad, of course. But what's stopping us getting a result yeah. there after that? I think it's probably going to be a different team. I don't think it'll be the same start 11 next week. Um but why? Why not? Why? Why can't? Why can't we go there and give them a game? We, we've done it a few times over the last few seasons, and do you know what is it? <laughs> I'm gonna be eating my words next week when they go and battle. Like, but <laughs> it's 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 Man City at the end of the day. But even to to be having this conversation that we can go there and put a decent performance on, who was expecting it, man? Who was expecting yeah. it? Yeah. Well, it's it's strange because you know looking at that Villa side and looking at how Villa have been playing. They're gonna blow a lot of teams away this season. You feel mm-hmm. just just with their pace up front, they're gonna cause trouble, especially for you know the bottom half of the table teams on that side. You know, you Villa are gonna be up there with us fighting the no for, mugs. for these positions. The, the, the no but, mugs, mate. They're a decent team. They've got a great no, manager, yeah. a great setup, and 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 yes, they're probably gonna have a similar season. I would say to what Brighton had last year. Um, yeah, and. I'd be quite interested, yeah, and like like I mentioned, we do normally get Villa fans watching these sort of things when we do them each season, and I'd be quite interested to to hear what their thoughts are now, because they just like our way of thinking. They probably thought we're on par with ourselves, yeah. and for that to happen, if if it was the other way around, I, I would be a little bit worried that maybe the season's not going to be the the way you had a thought. It might just be a blip, it might just be a one-off, um, and Newcastle just got the better of them on the day. But if the shoe was on the other foot, I, I wouldn't be looking forward to the next couple of games. Yeah, they've, they've lost two players now, haven't they? Because they lost, uh, was it Buendia before the, before Buendia, the yeah. training? Yeah, yeah, and now And he's now out Mings. for months, apparently. It mm. means that doesn't look like a good one. Um, you know, I think they're lucky the transfer window's still open. I think they can probably still go out and yes. maybe not replace those players, but get someone to fill in. Um We'll see what happens. It'll be an interesting season for both teams. Um, and we will be there for Newcastle. We're not going to be covering all the Villa games, but for Newcastle, we will be there every step of the way. Um, do you want to add anything to this one, Chris, before we wrap up? No, I mean, it's just good to be back. It really is. Yeah. Um, makes your weekend, be... doesn't it? When this, it does. <laughs> like this happens, <laughs> like it I does. woke up this morning, smiling my face. I'm just. Do you know what it is? I, I was. So what's the word I'm looking for? So I normally get really excited for the seasons. And I haven't really been excited going into this one because, I, like I said at the start, I was a bit, a bit on edge with it. Not because I know expectations will change; they're always going to change as the club yeah. progress. Expectations are always going to get higher and be to be set higher, and that's both from from those high up in the club and the fan base as well. 
So I was a little bit anxious going into the season, but God knows why, because what, what a day yesterday, man. Absolutely battered, a, a close competitor in the Premier League was, as well. Do you, do you know what was nice to see? Just the fitness levels. Mm. Just You mentioned Almiron, you mentioned Isak, but the whole team just never stopped for the 90 minutes. We were hungry for more goals at 4-5, and you said yourself, it could have been 6-7-8-0. Uh, 6-8-1, sorry. Um, and and I, I just, as well. just, just to end it, Tenali, what honestly, absolute ice cold that kid. He's just so cool and composed on the ball, and once again, it just looks effortless from our midfield. Yeah. It really does. And and Joe Linton, he's another one I've really touched on today, but he just does what he does best. He he, ha- he has a chance, obviously, to score the header, which he he knocks over. Um, but just him in midfield, it makes all the difference. And and I think last season. It was Bruno getting all plaudits, but Joe Linton makes everybody else look better around him. It's normally we were saying, oh, Bruno was making Joe Linton look better, blah, blah, blah. It's not. It's, it's the other way around for me. Joe Linton's just, honestly, he's, yeah. he's a fantastic midfielder. And and now we've got two pretty decent players on that left in Harvey Barnes and, and, um, and Anthony Gordon. I'm not saying that Maxi wasn't decent, but different sort of player for the team. I think we're going to see a yeah. lot more of Joe Linton in that middle because of the fact that there's cover now on the left. He's second play out there as well. And I think um, with Barnes, and, and th- there's always going to be a comparison between him and Maxi, because Maxi's the one one just left, yeah. and obviously he split the fan base's opinion. Maxi wouldn't do that yesterday. Maxi just no. didn't have have that, that pace and, and create those opportunities himself, for himself. That's the difference. And he scores on his debut. He has two great chances. And I, I would put money on Barnes getting double figures this season again because he, he, he's just going to find himself in the right place at the right time. Well, if he can get 13 goals on the side that gets relegated, I mean, you're doing something right. So, you know, fingers mm. crossed we're not going to get relegated. And <laughs> it's not even something you think about anymore than you're a Newcastle fan. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, in all competitions, absolutely, league, you'd like to think so. Um, see what happens. But we'll wrap that one up, Chris. Uh, I'll let you get back to your your Sunday morning uh, and your cup of tea that you've got on the go there. Um, we will see you tomorrow night for the Over Smiling Faces. Well, I won't, but Chris will for the for the Over Smiling Faces podcast. There's tons more content available now and coming up. And look at that. He's even in the Sam Fender uh, mug. Uh, we have, uh, like I said, Over Smiling Faces podcast. If you want to go back and watch some videos we released over this weekend, we've done our predictions for the coming season for Newcastle. Can uh, I change my... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I want to change, change mine as well. My <laughs> uh, there is a video reviewing the first episode of the Amazon documentary that Chris and Chris did. Um, that we're going to have to get a nickname for one of you if you're both on the same podcast, mind. Uh, that's Chris gonna Sandwich, isn't it? <laughs> um, what else have we got? There's another video as well, which I've totally forgot about. Uh, you're on the Sixsmith Show. Uh, you've got the Andy Sixsmith Show, and you've also got a, a video upcoming, Chris, with um, Floodlights On. Is that right? I do. Um, so we had uh, George from Floodlights on account. If people don't know what that is, um, if you go on Instagram, just search for it. It takes like sort of, of shots of, of um, alternative match day photos, I, I would say, um, which I, I love personally. I love that account. Um, so yeah, that'll be going out in, in the next few days, I would say. And if you want to get early access to those videos when they come out, all you've got to do is scroll down from this video and hit the little register button. It'll take you to our membership site where you can sign up and it's $2.99 a month starting for access to that membership group. You get early access to the videos. You get access to the Telegram group. Uh, There's also now a Discord server for all the gamers out there. Um, And you also get the opportunity to feature in a match preview and give us your prediction for scores. I mean, $2.99 goes a long, long way these days. Um, Can't ask for more. But if you don't want to do that and you just want to show a little bit of support our way, just hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up or thumbs down, uh, and hit the little notification bell to be notified when those videos go live. Um, But that's it for this one. A a great win, 5-1. What a start of the season. Bring on Man City. There's no fear anymore. Um, We'll see you in the next one. Ta-da. Cool.